your people Israel, when each one knows the plague of his own heart and spreads out his hands toward this temple, then here in heaven your dwelling place and forgive and act and give to everyone according to all his ways, whose heart you know. For you alone know the hearts of all the sons of men, that they may fear you all the days that they live in the land which you give to your fathers. Let's uh, pray together. Let's join together. Heavenly Father, uh, right now we lift up our hands and our hearts to you. And Father, we ask that you would help us to receive a word today. That Father, that you would uh, clear our minds and our hearts that we might hear from heaven. Father, we want to receive this into our souls and into our spirits. So Father, you speak now. And may great works be accomplished. And may great works be done. We love you. We thank you for this day and this time and ask you to do amazing works now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. This past week, uh, as I began to ask God what the church should be doing during this time and season that we're in, he took me to this passage of Scripture and he reminded me that this is not unusual in history. Uh, these may be trying times for us, but this is not new to God. Uh, we were first introduced to plagues, and by the way, we need to use biblical terms in this time. That's the problem in the world today. Christians don't use enough biblical terms. This, we're listening to the world say it's a pandemic, and I know that's a medical term, and, and we're getting used to the medical side of it. But we need to go back to Scripture and understand that plagues is the word that God associates with this type of work. It is the Hebrew word nagah. It means a blow. It means a strike. Listen, it means a disease, a mark, or a spot. It's affiliated with that terrible disease known as leprosy. We are introduced to plagues and the use of plagues in Exodus chapter 11, Exodus chapter 12, as God using them as a way to convince Pharaoh to let the people go. Then in Leviticus chapter 13 and 14, we are, uh, are, are dedicated in giving instructions to the priest on how to spiritually and physically treat plagues. Numbers chapter 11, chapter 13, 16, 25, Deuteronomy 28 verse 61, 2 Samuel chapter 24, 21 through 25 tells us of God's usage of plagues as discipline for the nation of Israel. So this is not uncommon. The word pandemic should be affiliated to us spiritually with the biblical term plagues. Plagues are not new. God has used them from the beginning of time. Now in our passage, Solomon has completed the building of the temple in Jerusalem. And he is dedicating it to the Lord. And in his prayer, this wonderful prayer, by the way, which is an entire chapter, uh, chapter 8. Now in this prayer to God, look what he does. He acknowledged this is a common thing in life. Notice with me in verse 37, the word he uses to begin this passage. He says, when there is. Do you see that in your Bible? He didn't write, if there is a plague, if there is a pandemic, if there is a sickness, might be a sickness, might be a plague. No, Solomon uses a phrase that indicates this should be ex expected. We shouldn't be shocked. We shouldn't be astonished that God would allow a plague to enter into the land. And so he uses this to say that this should be expected. Then in the verse, beginning in verse 38, he tells us the things we should be doing in times like this. So I've entitled this sermon this morning, 
what we should be doing in times like this. Beginning in verse 38, Solomon, the wisest man in the Scripture, as he's praying to God, as he makes this dedication of the temple unto the Lord, he begins by telling us that we are to pray. Now, if you're looking, look through your windshield just a minute up here, Brother Sam. I tried to elevate myself so you could see me, and I know some of you in the back may not be able to see me, but listen, I'll wave at you. Just know I'm looking at you. Listen to this. You say, Brother Sam, I know we're supposed to pray. I've been praying. I've been praying for God to heal the land. I've been praying for God's safety. I've been praying for God to do everything. Solomon says we're supposed to pray a specific prayer. Look at verse 38. He says, whatever prayer, whatever supplication is made by anyone or by all your people Israel, when each one knows, look at this phrase, the plague of his own heart. So you and I, during this time, we need to be praying, yes, but this prayer should be specific. It should be individual. The, Solomon says, before you and I can pray for our country, before we can pray for our neighbors, before we can pray for anyone, the Bible says, he makes it clear that you and I are to begin in our own heart. Notice that he uses the word plague. It's the same word in the Hebrew. Before God can deal with anyone, God always starts judgment in the house of God. He begins with His children. Before a dark world can see God, before a lost world can hear about God, before God speaks to anyone, He speaks to His children first. Solomon says, Anybody that's going to pray, anybody that's going to make supplication, anybody that is turning to the temple or turning to God, let him first begin by asking God about the plagues in their own heart. So I want to go over a couple of plagues this morning. I want us to examine our hearts. Could it be that this, this is happening? We know it's the sovereign will of God. We know that this is the plan of God. But what is the purpose? What is God uh, accomplishing? What does He want to target? Why is He working? So has the church, maybe in your life, have you the plague of selfishness? I love what Brother Johnny, I wrote it down and I put it in the front of my Bible. Brother Johnny said the greatest challenge to the 21st century church is to create a church to have a church that is not full of selfishness, self-centeredness, self-living. I wonder if God has allowed this to happen to interrupt our lives and remove or expose all of those areas of selfishness, our self-living. Could it be that God is trying to speak to the church and say for too long now we have focused on ourselves. We have focused inwardly in our hearts. We are too focused on our lives and less focused in the life of God. Could it be that we have a plague of selfishness? What about this plague? The plague of contentment. The plague of contentment. Boy, I've heard uh, the moaning and groaning of the children of God about how they miss their church and they miss assembling and gathering together. How they miss church. Y'all right? We miss it. We miss it. We miss it. Well, could it be that you can be here and yet not be here? You can be too contented in your walk with God. You can be too contented in the church. You can be too contented in life. Could it be that we have a plague of contentment that we need God to expose and work in our life? What about this one? I'm only going to share three, by the way. Aren't you glad? I think these first two pretty well sums up our lives. What about this third one? What about the plague of un? Gratefulness. 
How many of you have taken for granted the things of God? How many of us have taken for granted the, the person of God? How many of us are, are looking at our lives now? Let me tell you something. If you're in a third world country and this plague hits you, you're in bad shape. You think it's tough to get toilet paper. Live in a third world nation. It's just tough to exist and have life. And yet we still live in the greatest nation in the world. We still live in the greatest country in the world. We still have the greatest religious freedom in the world. God has blessed us. God has given us much more than we deserve. Have we become ungrateful? To our God. Uh, standing in the foyer just a minute ago talking to Brother Pete and, and uh, told him I got a phone call this morning and, and it was from someone who was discontent that we couldn't gather and assemble. And I told him, I said, well, we are gathering. We are assembling. We've got drive-in church. Thank God for this technology that we can gather out here today. And, and I must tell you, now, wait a minute. I must tell you that person was still disgruntled. They, they still didn't appreciate what God was doing. Have we become a people of ungratefulness? Can I remind us the Bible says we're supposed to give praise and thanksgiving unto God for everything that this world has given us, whether good or bad. We're supposed to be grateful unto our God. Matter of fact, I'll tell you this, you ought to be praising and thanking God for this plague. Mm, I didn't get no amens there. That might be a place I need to back up. Have we, we need to search our own hearts. So you say, Brother Sam, Solomon says we need to pray. Yes, Solomon does say to pray. But look what he says. Before you can pray for your country, before you can pray for anything or anybody, you've got to start with the plagues in your heart. Now once you start with the plagues in your heart, watch with me now. It's in the last part of verse 38. Don't miss this. I'm going to have a spell. Y'all all right? I... I can stomp on this thing and you can hear me. I'm uh, about to have a spell. Look what he says. Not only are we to pray, but listen, we are to surrender our plagues to God. Look what Solomon writes in the last part of that verse. He says to know your own heart, watch this, and spread out your hands toward this temple. Uh, there it is again. There's a picture of our hands being used in our relationship with God. This is symbolic. It is a metaphor. It's a picture. Listen. What's it a picture of? Surrender. It's a picture of surrender. Malachi was in the bedroom the other day and he got quiet. How many of y'all know what that means when a baby gets quiet? Uh, when they get quiet, they're usually into something. Amen? And and so I, I, I kind of looked and, and he had his back turned to me and he had something cusp in his hands. And when I saw him, I said, come here to Papa. And he came to Papa. I said, let me see what's in your hand. And watch what he did. Watch what he did. He opened the hand and exposed it. Hmm. You didn't get that. Hey, have you ever seen them old war movies? You ever seen them old cowboy movies? Or a cop show when they catch the bad guys? Or whenever the enemy surrenders, what do they do? They lay their weapons down. They put up their hands and say, Here I am. I'm surrendering myself to you. Tell you what, it's, it's not just enough to pray about your plague. It's not enough to tell God, God, I've got a plague in my heart. There's something in my heart. There is a sickness. There's a mark in my heart. It's, it goes much deeper than that. You're not only to pray about it. Listen, you're supposed to take an action of faith. You're supposed to surrender it to God. Lift up your hands. Open up your life. Open up your hands. Expose yourself. Look, matter of fact, Look what he says in verse 39. Look at the reaction and response of God. Look what he says. He says, Then here in heaven, your dwelling place, look and forgive and act and give to everyone according to his ways, whose heart you know. For you alone know the hearts of all the sons of men. God already.
already knows your heart. God knows your heart better than you know your heart. And Solomon says, when you pray and when God reveals the plague, you're to not just pray about it. Once it's revealed, open your hands. Surrender your life to God. Say, God, here is the plague. Why? Because it demands action from God. It demands the forgiveness of God. It demands the removal from God. It demands the blessing of God upon your life. God won't remove the plague till we surrender. I was at a pastor's conference this week by video, by Zoom. They began to talk about how they're going to go about redoing the church when it opens. And, and by the way, I hope your heart's ready. Uh, uh, things not going to be like they used to be. Uh, they can't be right now. And, and so now watch this. I heard a couple of them talking about sacred cows. And I got to wondering, I got to think, why in the world are they talking about that? You know what sacred cows are? Sacred cows are things you don't want to surrender to God. There's things that you want to hold on to. It's things that you deem as your God. I got to thinking about that and I said, Lord, do I have any sacred cows? Lord, are there any sacred cows in the church? Uh, God, this is, this is going to be an opportunity for you to lead us in things. and do. I never envisioned Standing outside. I told somebody today, we're not putting up the tent. I want to be like Jesus and preach outside. I never envisioned I'd do this. Never thought that I'd have the opportunity to do it. You want to know why? We've got too stinking complacent in the ways we worship and serve God. We are a sacred cow. We can only do it this way. We'll only accept it this way. We can only do it this way. God says that when a surrendered heart is ready and obedient for God to do it anyway, that God wants to do it. Not only are we to pray, but we are to surrender. Amen? Now I want to get to this last one because I, I hope that you can hear me. If you can't hear me through your radio, if you roll your window down, you can hear me. Not only are we to pray, and not only are we to surrender, we are to return to respect and fear of our God. Look at verse 40. Look how he finishes this little teaching lesson that he's doing. Look at verse 40. He says, God, why are you allowing these plagues and sicknesses? Why are you allowing all this, God? Uh, it's targeted toward his people first. But then look what, look what the outcome should be. Look what the outcome should be. That they may fear you all the day that they live in the land which you gave to their fathers. The word fear there is the Hebrew word yare. It means to fear. It means to revere. It means to be afraid of. I want to ask you a question this morning. Has, before you toot your horn now, you better listen closely. Don't go toot that horn till you get ready. Amen? Uh, now watch this. Has the church lost its fear of God? And I know what you're thinking. No, Brother Sam, I've not lost my fear. Oh, no, Brother Sam, I have great respect and reverence to my God. No, Brother Sam, the church hasn't lost its fear. I, I want to challenge you to look at the attitude and the approach of the church. Of the church concerning the Word of God. You're sitting here today and you say, oh no, Brother Sam, it's infallible and it's inerrant. I, I believe it from cover to cover. I, I have great respect and reverence for the Word of God. Really? Well, why is it that we have so many churches that agree with homosexual marriage? Why do we have so many churches that agree with or disorder in the church? Anointing women, anointing people that are deep deep in sin and putting them in places of leadership as pastors and authority in the church. Hey, how come the church men and women in the church, possibly even you today, living in open, blatant disrespect to the righteousness and the holiness of Jesus Christ in you. 
You know that you have a sin that you're just blatantly before God. You know it's not right. You know it's not the right attitude. You know the Word of God speaks against it. And yet we choose to continue to live in the defilement of the Word of God. What about the nature and character of our God? I tell you what we need. We need those old saints of old that would be standing now crying out before the world. This is a mighty, sovereign work of a righteous, holy God who says this is enough. The sin and the acceptance, the love, the adornment, the need of sin is, die, is causing the world to die and thousands and millions are going to hell bound in their sin. Matter of fact, there's no power in the church because we're trapped in so much sin. So let me ask you a question. Do we really fear this God? I always take my mind back to the Old Testament and try to place my life where others were. And uh, Solomon grew up hearing those great stories of his father. How he took a shepherd boy and, and killed the bear and the lion. And brought him in and anointed him king. Had him stand against the giant and kill him with one major blow. One miracle after another. One powerful display of God after another. Where do you think the fear and reverence that Solomon had came from? It came from a father who knew and saw the miracles of God. I tell you what we're not doing in this season, in this time. There's not enough people pointing and saying, Oh no, it's, it, it may have started in China, but let me tell you something. There's somebody greater than the nation of China. There's somebody greater that we need to be focused on. There's somebody we need to be turning to. And it's not who to blame. And it's not why it happened. It is, this is a sovereign, powerful work of an almighty God. By the way, the world will never turn from its sin until it sees the church turn from its sin. The hopelessness of the world will never come to salvation in God until we tell them. There's plagues in our hearts. We surrender our life, God. God, we want to return to a time of fear, time of reverence of a holy, righteous God. Until that happens, until we return to fear, until we return, how can we expect the world to acknowledge and see God? God help us. Now right where you're at this morning, I want to ask you a question. We're, we're doing this as close as we can to our church services. I, I want to ask you a question this morning. Will you take a minute and bow your heads and ask God, God, are there some plagues in my heart? God, is there some plagues in me? Now when God reveals that plague, you got to take the next step. you got to say, God, I want to surrender to you. I'm opening my hands. I'm uncovering it, Father. I, I'm opening my hands and I'm lifting my hands and saying, God, I surrender. You take it. I, you take this plague. You take it and bring healing upon my life. Then and only then can the fear of God and the reverence of God be seen by others. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, in the stillness of this, the next few moments, Father, I ask You to search hearts. I ask, Father, that You would reveal those areas of plague that are in our heart. I pray, Father, that we'd be willing to surrender through confession and repentance, Father. That is us opening our hands 
Uh, the other day when uh, Malachi opened his hands, Father, when he surrendered, he allowed me to take what was in his hand out. Father, repentance, confession, repentance. Father, take this plague from me. Return me and restore me to reverence and fear of Almighty God. Speak now, Father, and bring, bring changes upon your people's hearts. In Jesus' name. I, I'm going to ask you right now, if you're here today and you, you've made a decision for Christ, uh, Brother Gary and I are prepared to come to your car and pray for you, pray with you. Uh, we're ready to come to you and uh, to just encourage you. We'll do it from outside the car. We won't stick our heads or anything in the, in the car. But if you made a decision to, for God today, maybe God has spoken to your heart. Maybe you've made a decision. Maybe you have, have come to a place of surrender where you've surrendered the plague of your heart. If that's you today and you'd like for Gary or I to pray for you, uh, please text us. You know my number, uh, Brother Gary's number. Uh, we gave you a sheet of paper or some of you got a sheet of paper in the, as you came in today. We want to know. We want to pray with you, pray for you. If you don't have your phone and you can't text us, just roll down your window and stick your hand up. And, and Brother Gary and I will come to you. And we'll pray with you. Just stick your hand out of your car and we'll, we'll come with you. Got one right here, Brother Gary. If you would make your way there. Is there anybody else? If God's spoken to your heart today, what should we be doing in a season like this? The worst thing you do is do nothing. Solomon told us, gave us instruction on the things that we're to do. Pray from your own heart. Let God reveal the plague. Then surrender unto God. Sharon is going